Hey guys, Great Widow One here. Uh, lately, I have been asked quite a bit. Hey, can uh, you? What equipment should I put on my tank? So I figured I'm gonna go ahead and solve this issue for you. I'm gonna make a video. Uh, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. This video is gonna be very long because I like to rant and go into detail about everything, and also sometimes tend to repeat myself. <laughs> but uh, to save yourself some time, look into the description. I'm gonna put in a timestamp of each tank because Wargaming also has got so many tanks. I mean, if you look at the tech tree, look at how many tanks. Uh, there's so many tech trees anymore, and there's so many tier tens. It's just really, really hard to keep up with and knowing hey what should I put because each tank is unique and each tank is different but a lot of them have got a similar aspect to them so you may find a lot of repeats on your equipment um, but like I like I said I, I, I'm gonna put it in the description a quick route to what tank you want so that way you can just look in click the timestamp takes you directly to it and you can save some time and then the headache of watching the whole entire video so starting off this list, we're going to start with the AMX-13105. This is my favorite tier 10 scout tank, because uh, I really love my autoloaders, and I really love my French tanks, and this is just the mix between both of them. Um, for the first thing you want to take, because it's a scout, like all scouts, you always got to take yourself some uh, coated optics. Next, I recommend taking some ventilation to improve that DPM as much as you can get. It's the only way in a scout tank you can improve DPM is by loading ventilation. So, or not even not a scout tank, I'm sorry, in an autoloader. Uh, anytime you have a chance to, uh, you, there's ventilation on autoloader always 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 put it on and for the final thing improve that accuracy on the move with the 13 uh, with the uh, vertical stabilizer because this tank does not mount a gun rammer you can easily run the vertical stabilizer to improve your accuracy on the move uh, next we're end up going to for our next light tank we're gonna go to the Pinard EBR uh, this is the most controversial light tank in the game due to its incredible speed and to me this tank is more of a distraction tank than worrying about how much damage you put out so definitely give yourself some coated optics and give yourself some ventilation to help your uh, to, you know to improve everything about it you're driving uh, you definitely improve that view range because the view range is very important on this tank because it's only got 390 uh, with the vents on it so it's not much so if you don't have the ventilation on it you, you're down basically almost 10 meters and that 10 meters can be a big difference um, <laughs> and then finally improve your rate of fire with the gun rammer now some people swap off the vents and they put themselves on a vertical stabilizer to improve their accuracy on the move but I still think that this tank accuracy on the move is good enough that it doesn't really need it and plus the vents bumps up everything including your accuracy so in to me this tank is also a bigger distraction tank so the better you are at driving it the better you will do because it relies more on its driving rather than its gun all right, the next tank on this list, we're going to the RHM Panzer Wagon. This is by far the worst tier 10 light tank, and I can't stress this enough. Make sure this is the last light tank you end up going for. And this is due to the fact of its sheer ginormous size. This thing is, it, compared to some of the other scouts, its camo value is just completely garbage. It's fairly accurate. It's got 105 millimeters, similar to the WZ, more accurate than the WZ, but its camo value is just not as good. Uh, so definitely give yourself some coded optics because it has the best view range. Bump it up to 200, 462, but because its camo value is not as good as a T100s, it's not as effective. And then finally, give yourself some ventilation to improve everything overall. Pretty much you're going to be standard uh, on any scout tank with coded optics, rammer, and Vents. Uh, now going on to the T100LT, this is tied for first in my opinion for the best scout tank that is tracked. Uh, the, obviously the EPR in some cases is always going to be better than a track tank due to the fact that it really pretty much cannot be stopped unless all eight wheels are destroyed. <laughs> but for the for the track tanks, the T100 and the AMX 105 to me are tied for first due to the type of gun system that they have. Uh, coated optics, give yourself a rammer, and because this has got a hundred millimeter that's fairly accurate, you can give yourself ventilations really really easy. And now to the next tank, the WZ 132 one, the Chinese light. This is going to be for the tracked uh, track scouts. This is going to be your third best due to it has the third best camo out of the tracked lights refer to track the EBR is still in it's in its own class um, give yourself some coded optics to improve that view range and give yourself a gun rammer now I myself would go with ventilation to improve everything about it I highly recommend going with ventilation but if you want to improve that accuracy of the gun because this is a light tank with a medium caliber gun so you can give yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move and reduce that aim time, that atrocious aim time of this tank. 
you can give yourself a vertical stabilizer, but I still give, recommend giving yourself vents so everything is improved. Uh, that way your view range pops up, your camo value goes down, and then your reload and DPM and stuff goes down. Not like It goes down just a tiny bit, and your aim and stuff is a tiny bit. Not as much as a vertical stabilizer would put on, but it's still that a little bit to matter. Um, now for the next light tank is the final one, the Sheridan. This is... Uh, there's two equipment setups that I got for this, depending on the gun that you're using. If you're using the 152 millimeter coated optics, rammer, and then 100%, always put a vertical stabilizer on. Due to you can knock down and reduce that aim time, big. Uh, you're going to be your accuracy is obviously going to be better on the move, and it's very important that you reduce because you're going to be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting for this tank to aim with that 152 millimeter. So if you get that vertical stabilizer on it, it makes a difference. But if you're going to be in the more competitive part, using the uh, 105, take off that vertical stabilizer and put on a ventilation. Uh, definitely do that. Definitely, definitely to improve that view range. You improve your DPM and improve uh, you know your speed on the move and stuff like that. Um, now, on to the medium tanks, the first one on the list is going to be the 121. Uh, the 121 is a medium tank with a traditional with the Chinese, a medium tank with a heavy tank gun. Uh, definitely put on some coated optics because, look, you've already got, with the coated optics, you get 440. That's just as much as some of the scouts. The only difference is your camo is not as good. I also recommend taking ventilation and a large caliber gun rammer. Now, because it is a medium tank with a heavy tank gun, like the 430U, you can definitely swap off that vents and put yourself on a vertical stabilizer, but I recommend not doing that too. You basically want to be able to boost everything about your tank. Uh, make everything better rather than just aim for one thing. Uh, the 121 is not a 430U, obviously. It's nowhere near as good, but its closest counterpart is to it. But I'd recommend taking a ventilation. Um, now on to the next medium tank on our list is going to be the 30B. I don't know why I love this tank. This is my favorite medium tank definitely for randoms. I can't answer you why I love it so much. Uh, it's got 410 base view range. Definitely increase that. Give yourself some coated optics. 100% put on some ventilations because this thing is fairly accurate to begin with and improve that DPM with that gun rammer. This is definitely the setup that I always use and I love my 30B. Uh, it, it, I don't know why I love it. All right, for the next medium on this tank, it's going to be the Bat Chat, the most notorious autoloader throughout the whole land. <laughs> uh, definitely, this is a this is a medium scout. This is by far going to be the best scout, uh, it, it, just due to the fact that it's got some decent camo. So give yourself some ventilation, and it's also got that autoloader to be able to defend itself. And because, or my bad, coated optics, not ventilation, but definitely give yourself ventilation. Always, anytime in an autoloader, always put ventilation. You can bump that reload, look at that reload, clip reload is 39.16, and you move it down to 38.32. Uh, it's definitely, definitely important to put some ventilation on there. And finally, because you don't have to worry about mounting a gun rammer on there, give yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move. All right, for next medium, t or, yeah, next medium tank, I'm sorry, I stumbled on boards there, is the Centurion Action X. Um, give yourself coated optics. I still recommend probably most me most of your medium tanks always, always put in coated optics. This is probably some underrated equipment in some people's eyes. I like to put some vertical stabilizers on there, which I'm not a fan of. I also recommend putting on some ventilation and then a ca uh, medium caliber gun rammer to finish it off. Improve everything about your tank. Give yourself some be better DPM. This tank is fairly accurate to start with. And now on to the uh, E50M Augusta. Uh, this is going to be your troll tank. Obviously, if you get this tank, you want to go have some fun in random. So give yourself a medium caliber or a small liner. Definitely give yourself a small liner so you can improve that ramming. And then give yourself a uh, the, the ramming perk there. So that it'll be a lot more fun. And then improve your speed so that way you can ram even harder. Give yourself some ventilation. And finally, give yourself a better accuracy gun. Or not, not sorry, not a better accuracy gun, a more DPM tank gate. So that way you can at least kind of use your gun once in a while. This is the setup that if you want to have some fun with, definitely 100% go with it. But in Clan Wars, you might swap off that that medium caliber uh, spall liner for a coated optics. But this is what I recommend on the E50 amp just to definitely have some fun. Usually if you take this tank out, it's either you've, you've either got nothing else because you were dumb and went for the tank for one of your first, or you're definitely out to have some fun. <laughs> All right, so the next medium tank is going to be the K91. This is the best sniper, second to the Leo. Uh, it and the Leo are probably going to be tied, especially with the recent buff that the Leo got due to the fact that the Leo's got a 360 turret, so it gives it a big advantage over the K91, especially towards the closer range combat. Um, give yourselves coded optics so that way you're always hidden because this tank 
cannot rely on its armor as much as the other Russian uh, tanks of all of its other buddies. Just because it does not have a 360 turret, it has got to stay back. Finally, give yourself some ventilation so that way you can improve your camo rating and that view range even more. And then give yourself a nice gun rammer to improve that DPM because this tank is the best DPM in the game at the moment uh, for medium tanks. Uh, the next is going to be your next DPM tank is going to be your STB. Uh, let's see what next on our list is going to be the Patton. This is uh, I know this is several people's favorites in the clan. Um, definitely give yourself coded optics, improve that view range, ventilation, and then finally give yourself a gun rammer. Uh, this tank is the best snapshot, so you don't need a vertical stabilizer to increase it. This is the best snapshot medium in the game. All right, so finally, next, you're going to go up to Object 140. This is the most popular tank due to the fact that it's very versatile. It can either snipe or it can either brawl. So give yourself some coded optics. Like I said, improve that view range. You want to be the first one to see your enemy because if you're the first one to see your enemy and get off that shot, uh, first shot, you have a better chance of winning the brawl. Finally, give yourself some ventilation to improve everything and then a medium caliber gun rammer. Uh, next on the list, oops, hit the wrong button. Uh, next, oh, I totally skipped the Leopard 1, didn't I? It's going to be the Leopard 1. Give yourself coded optics because you're going to be sniping in the back. You've got to make sure you see everybody. Next, you're going to be give yourself a ventilation to improve your uh, camo, everything. You've got to have that ventilation. And then finally improve that rate of fire with a medium caliber gun rammer. All right, so for the next medium we have got is the Object 430U. This is definitely the best medium tank to take in for pubs, just simply because you got the trollish armor, it's got at least some speed to be able to relocate, and it's got a heavy tank gun. So for this tank, I recommend taking coated optics, ventilation, and some medium caliber small liner. But because this tank is a big heavy hitter and you don't have to worry about hanging at the back that often, you can take yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move but I still recommend taking ventilation so you improve everything rather than just your one thing, just just the gun. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the uh, Progetto. Uh, this is a confusing tank because it's an auto reloader, so you can mount a gun rammer because it does fire single shot. And then finally, because this has a clip reload, you've got to, you've got to increase that interclip reload. You have to, so definitely 100% mount that ventilation. And then because this is an opportunistic tank, uh, this is the lowest DPM out of all of the mediums. Load a load of coded optics so you make sure that you can see somebody as soon as they make a mistake. You have got to see them before they make a mistake because sometimes you're only allowed to get off one shot. And then the good thing about the auto reloader is you can reload that first shell in eight seconds and then be able to punish later on if they come out for a second time. And you might be able to get lucky with the track and hit them two times and then reload those two shells later. Unlike with a full auto loader, you have to reload the whole clip. The Brigetto is able to just, it's an opportunistic tank. It takes advantage of the opportunity in your mistake, but it is sacrifice at the DPM. Uh, let's see, for next, we're going to have the STB. This is going to be, since the recent buffs Wargaming did to this, giving it a siege mode, and it doesn't have 390 alpha, it's actually got 360. Uh, Wargaming lowered its damage, its alpha damage. They increased its turret armor by some, but it, like I said, it has a siege mode, and it's also, its top speed is meh. But give yourself a gun rammer, and be because if you depending on how you're going to play it, you can bond yourself to coded optics and always put on ventilations. But because this tank is highly inaccurate, you can put vertical stabilizer to improve that snapshot. But you're never in this tank going to be sitting there and just using your DP. It's rarely ever going to be using that DPM because its aim time is atrocious and stuff like that. It's still accuracy. It's better than it was before with the bigger alpha damage, but it's not as good as I think it should be because if they're wanting to make it a frontline tank, uh, you can definitely take that vertical stabilizer, but I still recommend taking that coded optics so that way you can see the enemy first because there's not there's chances where you have to be at the back sniping. You're kind of forced to because you're the last guy alive, so you want to be able to see them before they get to you. Um, let's see. Now we're going to go up to the T62A. This is the twin to the 140. Same setup as 140. Coded optics, ventilation, and a medium caliber gun rammer. Uh, let's see, and for the final, oh, no, not the final, I'm sorry, you got the TVP here. This is the second to last medium tank in the game. There's just so many mediums. Uh, give yourself ventilation because this is an autoloader. You've got to improve that clip reload. Give yourself coded optics to improve that, improve that view range, and then finally give yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move. This is the bat chat killer. It's got 1.5 second reload in between each shell with four shells in its clip. This thing could tear apart 
bat chats. It definitely punishes the enemy within a short burst time as soon as they poke out. It, the TVP is an underrated tank, I feel. And then finally, the Udes. This still, this is going to be the better siege tank due to the fact that it's higher alpha, and you can poke up, shoot, and then back down, and then go unlit due to the fact of how long its reload is, and then come back up and punish them again for nice 440 alpha. Uh, this tank has also got sloped armor, so it's very trollish. This tank is a, uh, this is a really, really good tank. The Udes is, but because of it. Definitely want to improve that view range. It's got some low view range, so give yourself coded optics. You have to improve it on this tank. It's definitely required. Give yourself some ventilation, and then give yourself a large caliber gun rammer to improve that rate of fire. The ventilation helps improve that view range by what little bit you can, because look, it's fairly low. The tank's got a base of 390, which you can get that up to three, uh, 438 with the ventilation and coded, coded optics combo. Uh, now, moving on to our heavy tanks, the uh, a you got the 113. This is a meh tank uh, it's definitely really good in certain opportunities you can take one of your game and use that guy's doing nothing but constant tracking because of its rate of fire it can keep enemies if they're doing a push on you just aim for the tracks and you can get them blocked every eight seconds so because this tank is not really used on open maps that often because uh, due to the fact it's got five degrees in the front and seven on the side so it's awkward on hills you definitely want to put on some ventilation Give yourself a caliber, large caliber gun rammer, and then improve that accuracy with a vertical stabilizer. This is this is your brawl tank. He's not going to be the one getting your eyes to begin with. Uh, he's if you give it coded optics, it's not going to give its view range great. While it's still equal to the 430U and or not the 430U, the U does in a way. I still find it more important to load that ventilation on there and improve its accuracy due to this tank is made to damage. Uh, the next um, heavy tank we're going on this list is going to be the 60 TP. Uh, this is the twin to the E4. If your E4 is locked, the 60 TP can take its place because it's basically got the same gun. It acts the same. It, it's the only difference is this is a 360 turret. Uh, give yourself coded opt. No, I'm sorry, not don't give yourself coded opt. Just give yourself ventilation, a gun rammer, and then improve that accuracy with the vertical stabilizer because this tank is meh on accuracy. Uh, you can swap out that ventilation for a uh, in a gun lane drive, but I still recommend taking the vent so that way you can improve that really long reload that this tank has. Um, okay, so next on our list for the heavy tanks is going to be the AMX-50B. This is my favorite heavy tank autoloader just because of its speed. I like being able to relocate very quickly. But this thing is the biggest autoloader. What I mean by that is the tallest. So every time you're anywhere, you get lit. Uh, definitely take some coded optics on this tank. It, it seems odd putting coded optics on a heavy tank, but you want to make sure that the enemy is lit before you are because you're so ginormous. It's hard to be stealthy in this tank. Now, because this is an autoloader, definitely 100% mount that v uh, ventilation. And then finally, give yourself that vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy. Like I said, this tank is so big, it's always, always consider yourself lit. So make sure that you can outspot your enemy so you light them first and you can get into cover very quickly. Because uh, this, this tank has got the speed to be able to do so. And next, to go into the AMX M4, the, the lesser super conch. <laughs> this tank is not as good as the Super Conk. Uh, depending on the gun that you're going to use, uh, definitely put on grammar, ventilation, if you plan on using the 105, or the 120, I'm sorry. If you plan on using the 120, ventilation, and then give yourself a vertical stabilizer. Now, if you use the 130, you can replace because this tank isn't that accurate and its penetration isn't that great. It's nice to keep that DPM up because it is fairly low DPM. I mean, 2,500 with the 130 up to 2,600. It's it's not big of a difference, but you can swap that out and give yourself to a, like because this thing is fairly inaccurate. Give yourself a gun lane drive uh, with the 130 millimeter. Uh, it's you lose DPM, you definitely lose DPM, but this tank accuracy with the 130 is meh so I myself would load a gun lane drive over ventilation and then now on to our E100 this tank especially if they do that a premium or not sorry a standard shell buff that they're wanting to do to all tanks it will do a thousand damage which is insane but that's on the sandbox test server and a lot of that stuff usually never goes live to begin with so that might not make it past the sandbox um, this tank is made to sit there and tank uh, just to block and get occasional shot. It's not as good at blocking as the E1 or the mouse is. So definitely, this tank relies more on its gun. So give yourself a gun rammer. Give yourself a vertical stabilizer because this tank has to rely on its turret rotation. 
uh, because you have to angle your turret for your armor to be effective. If you're facing directly towards the enemy, you're easily going to be penetrated. So, and then finally, because this tank, its weak cheeks are its weak spot, you are ha you want to spend less time aiming at the enemy as possible. So give yourself a gun lane drive. Uh, due to the fact that the Type 5 got its recent nerf uh, of its, you know, its big derpy gun, no one ever uses that tank anymore. Um, so you you don't want to you you definitely don't want to rely on a spall liner. You don't really have to use a spall liner on this tank at all anymore. So you definitely load a gun lane drive so that way your weak spot of the tank is hidden as much as possible. Now moving on to the IS-4, this is the worst heavy tank. It doesn't know if it wants to be a super heavy. It doesn't know if it wants to be a fast heavy. It's just stuck in between in an odd spot. Give yourself gun rammer ventilation and then finally finally a vertical stabilizer because this this tanks poor you're never going to really use it ever in any situation until wargaming gives it a buff that maybe it might be used maybe it might get some love but it's russian so it might get over buffed so <laughs> wait and see uh, finally the is7 this is the old school og fast heavy this tank is really good for defensive or being alone and pushing and holding a flank for as long as possible its dpm is poor but its armor is fantastic uh, give yourselves a gun rammer, and then I recommend ventilation, and then finally give yourself a vertical stabilizer. This this tank doesn't rely on, uh, it's it's got decent accuracy, so you don't have to put on a gun lane drive. You definitely want to improve that accuracy on the move, so that way sometimes you can get lucky with some of your snapshots if you have to quickly, especially if the tank is circling you. And now on to the Kronwagen. The best haul down autoloader in the game. Uh, this tank has got 12 degrees of gun depression. Now, for an autoloader, that is incredible, especially with the buff that Wargaming recently given it with 440 alpha instead of the base 400 like the 57 or the 50B. Because it's an autoloader, obviously put on your ventilation. And then finally put on a vertical stabilizer. And then for your last one, it's your choice. You can go with the same route as the 50B because a lot of the times the ground is be used on hills. And most of the, tank, most of the games where there's hills, you have to spot. Uh, so give yourself coded optics so you can see that enemy first. And then if you want to and you know you're going to be playing your tank only in the city, take yourself a gun lane drive. But I still recommend taking coded optics on this heavy tank just simply because it's similar to 50B. It's kind of a little bit big while it's way smaller than 57. It's definitely smaller than 57. It's the smallest out of all the other autoloaders. But take coded optics so that way you can see your enemy first. This tank, look, it's an opportunity tank. Uh, you see someone, you quickly unload your tank, and then you got to run. You, you unload your clip and you got to run. So you want to make sure your enemy is as far away as possible so you have plenty of time to run. Uh, now moving on to the mouse. This is the big behemoth. No matter what, definitely this tank since it's made to tank load a heavy super heavy spall liner this tank is definitely could put on that super heavy spall liner it's got decent accuracy to begin with so you don't have to worry about putting on a gun lane drive and then finally put on a vertical stabilizer so that way you can improve your uh, accuracy during turret rotation because this tank like the E100 if you're facing directly towards the enemy with your turret it's at its weakest point so you have to angle its armor for it to be effective and now moving on from the mouse, go to the 277. This is going to be one of the most common tanks for any player to get. I definitely recommend getting this one or the 5A. Uh, so definitely put on ventilation, put on yourself a gun rammer, and then finally put on a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move. Because this tank, usually the time it gets to use its gun, it's rushing past the enemy. So it's definitely firing on the move quite a bit. Uh, definitely use that ventilation to also help that aim on the move. Okay, so now moving on from the 277 to the Object 705A. This is the king of side scraping, but its accuracy is really, really poor. Give yourself a gun, a gun rammer, obviously. Finally, give yourself a vertical stabilizer. It's a must with this tank. Now, because the this is different than the mouse and the E100, it can actually point its gun directly towards the enemy. It doesn't have to worry about angling it, because if you angle it, you actually expose a weaker part of your turret. So you don't have to worry about taking a gun lane drive because most of the time your tank is going to be pointed towards the enemy. So you can give yourself ventilation uh, over a gun a gun lane drive due to the fact that your armor is effective pointing towards the enemy. So you don't have to worry about your you're going to be angled, aimed at them anyways. Uh, now after the uh, 705A is going to be the Panzer 7. This tank is an opportunity tank. Um, definitely take a gun rammer. Uh, its hull is really weird. Because its hull is its weak is its strongest point, while its side, it's not made to side scrape. You'd think being a rear mounted tank would be able to side scrape, but it's not. Uh, it's also horrible, horrible DPM. So give yourself ventilation and improve that DPM. It doesn't improve it by much, but anything 
it helps with this tank because it's just it's the worst super heavy I think it's actually the worst DPM heavy tank out of all of them um, and then the vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move and even during turret rotation okay now the super conk this is the king of ridge lines nothing could beat a super conk or cron no matter how much the cron wants to try he's still not going to be able to beat a super conk due to the single shot of the super conk he, he's less likely to be rushed the Kron's more likely to be rushed due to the fact he's got that auto loader. So he takes three shots, but the Super Conk is still always going to be king. Now, because of this, take yourself a large caliber gun rammer. Now, if you look at the tank, it's got 400 base meter view range. And if you want, you can definitely, definitely, I definitely recommend putting on a vertical stabilizer, or not vertical stabilizer, uh, ventilation. But you can swap out that vertical stabilizer and put yourself up some coated optics so that way you can see the enemy and you don't have to always rely on your scout. Uh, it's definitely can help you out in, in quite a bit of situations because the super conk it's it's made to snipe you're not going to be up in the face brawling all that often because by the time the enemy's in your face they're going to be pushing past you so if you're able to see it can help you out but if you think that you're going to be able to do more snapshots and stuff take yourself a vertical stabilizer but be this tank is always almost always used in open fields and open areas so definitely I believe you should mount coated optics on your super conk uh, now for our next heavy, it is going to be the T110E5. This this is bad. This is similar to the e, uh, the IS4. It's just garbage. Wargaming buffed it, made it fantastic. By far, probably the best heavy tank at the time. And then they over nerfed it worse than whenever they like bef before the buff. Um, this tank is just garbage. Gun uh, gun rammer and pr try to improve its uh, DPM even more because it's got poor DPM. And then finally, give yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy. Uh, now, after the E5, we've got the T57 Heavy. This is the best DPM autoloader in the game. Uh, this is going to be most commonly used on your city maps. You definitely want it because its accuracy is poor. Take a gun lane drive, vertical stabilizer, and then finally, because it is an autoloader, to improve everything about it, give itself some ventilation. All right, so next on our list is going to be the WZ-111 5A. This is the final heavy tank. Uh, give yourself the same as the 277. Rammer, ventilation, and then finally give yourself a vertical stabilizer to improve that accuracy on the move because most of the time whenever you're on this tank you'll be firing at the move and moving past your enemies doing a push as a group this tank is rarely ever used on its own uh, and then now moving on to our tank destroyers the Fosh B this is this is an only autoloader tank destroyer besides the Fosh 155 but this for your normal tanks you'll be unlocking it's the only autoloader tank destroyer so give yourself improved ventilation uh, this tank has two play styles and both are equally good it's an aggressive frontline play style tank due to the fact it's got decent armor but don't 100 percent rely on your armor because if they load gold shells they're probably going to pin but they've got a chance of bouncing it's kinda like a, it's angled armor so there's that chance of bouncing so if you plan on being aggressive with your tank Definitely give yourself a gun lane drive to improve that aim time, and then give yourself 100% always load of ventilation. But if you plan on being more passive, oh, I put two ventilations, I'm sorry, put ventilation on there, and then finally for your last one, give yourself, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, a camouflage net. Uh, just so that way you have a opportunity to set back, but you also have that opportunity to be aggressive whenever you need it. Um, you can swap out that camo net and put on binox, but why would you risk that whenever you, uh, you know, you want to stay you want to stay hidden in this tank if you want to be able to snipe and sometimes it's kind of nice just being able to rush in so you have the ventilation to improve your dpm and then the accuracy from the gun lane drive to help its inner clip because it's important that this tank gets off tries to get off every two seconds rather than sitting there waiting so with that gun lane drive it improves its accuracy after it's fired its gun all right, so next TD is going to be the Badger. This is the best DPM tank in the game. It is rather slow, and its penetration kind of lacks, but it's still the best DPM tank in the game. Um, depending on the method that you're going to be doing it, but most commonly, you're going to be doing both roles. So prepare yourself for both roles. Give yourself a uh, definitely give yourself a gun rammer. Give yourself some ventilation to improve that DPM by even more. And then finally, give yourself a nice camouflage net so that way, in cases you need to set back, because this tank is used on city maps and it's also used on the open maps. Uh, it's used on both. <laughs> so give yourself a camo net for the, uh, the times that you need to sit there and just wait out in the open field. And definitely give yourself some ventilation to improve that DPM, because look at that monster base DPM with a, with a gun rammer and the vents of 4,000. It's incredible. Uh, you can improve 
definitely put on improved equipment. I mean, look how much that increases it. We'll put on a, a 4,200 with all improved equipment. Um, definitely, you're not going to be loading, you know, two different types of ventilation here. So, <laughs> but you, you can improve it by quite a, quite a bit. So definitely put on camo net ventilation, and then finally a gun rammer onto the Badger. Uh, next TD is going to be the FE405 Stage 2. This thing is ginormous. You're always going to be lit. So there's no point in trying to hide it. Uh, usually it's going to be your tank just, just floats around the battlefield. The guy's all alone. He just looks for an opportunity to hit. Gun rammer, ventilation, and then finally a gun lane drive so that way you spend out less time out in the open. Because remember, this tank is ginormous and it's got super, super weak turret armor of only 14. So all, everyone's going to obviously overmatch it, always pin you with HE. So to reduce your time out in the open and exposed, give yourself a, a gun lane drive. And now onto the next TD is going to be the grill. This is the second best sniper over this. Like the Sturve's obviously going to be your better sniper. So because of this, you're going to want to mount because it's light armored, binox, camo net, and then finally give yourself a large caliber gun rammer. Uh, this tank is going to be sitting in the back, farming and farming, just like a Sturve. It is not made for the front lines due to its light armor, but it's got the speed to be able to relocate. And unlike the Sturve, it doesn't have to go out in, in and out of siege mode, so it can move instantly. For our next TD is going to be the Jagdpanzer E100, the uh, bet definitely an armored behemoth. Uh, because this, you're always going to be lit, and it's usually going to be used on the city maps. If they use it on open maps, I think they're fools. But give yourself some ventilation, finally give yourself a, a large caliber gun rammer, and then end it with a gun lane drive to improve that aim time so you set out in the open with your superstructure exposed, because your superstructure for other TDs can be penetrated. So as soon as you get off that shell, you're able to angle it and increase that armor, so you don't have to worry about your superstructure being penetrated as hard. So give yourself a gun lane drive so you're exposed less often. And then now moving on to the uh, Object 268, this thing is garbage, it's definitely the version 4 is way better. Uh, this tank is kind of like the Fosh, it's a medium, it, it's, it's a medium distant TD, it's not really made to snipe, but it's not really made for the front lines, it can front line, but yet it can snipe, so it's a medium range tank. Give yourself some ventilation to improve, give yourself a gun rammer, and then finally give yourself a camo net to stay hidden. Um, this, like I said, it's, it's just, this can do both roles, but it can't do either one very well. This tank is just poor. Uh, it's definitely rarely, rarely used. Uh, next, on to the 268 version 4. This is the better tank. Uh, this is your front line. Obviously, ventilation, gun lane drive, and rammer. This is going to be base setup for the version 4 to improve that DPM. Be able to prove that, because you're, you're, they need, this tank, if you're sniping with it, I think you're stupid, because it's got the armor. You can definitely get up and you can distract your enemies up in front of their face and keep moving, confuse them, make your lower plate really, really, really hard to hit, and the, these tanks can just shred. Uh, these, even with the nerf that they had, these tanks are still overpowered and still need another nerf. Uh, now, after the version 4, the best sniper in the game, the Sturve, it's going to be similar to the Grill. Camo net, Binox, and then finally a Gun Rammer. This tank has got really good accuracy, so you don't have to worry about a gun lane drive. And you want to stay hidden to begin with, because the Sturve, as soon as it's lit, it's dead. Now, the E3 is a unique, it's a super TD. Uh, give yourself a Gun Rammer. Give yourself ventilation to improve that DPM. And then finally, I actually recommend giving yourself a super heavy small liner. Because a lot of the times in the E3, you're probably going to be facing another E3. And the only way you can pin an E3 if they're hull down is in their captain's hatch. And it's very, very, very rare that you're going to be able to hit that. So you're going to be in an HE war with another fellow E3. So to reduce your damage of worrying about e another E3 HE in you, Give yourself a super heavy spall liner so you don't have to worry about, you know, you're, you're taking less damage then, and you are better apt to win the fight. So definitely I recommend taking a super heavy spall liner on your E3. Uh, next is going to be the E4. This is by far the best TD on corners. Uh, because of the way its armor layout and somewhat the way it is, it's better than a 60 TP for a TD uh, roll. Uh, give yourself some ventilation. Give yourself a large caliber gun rammer, and then finally give yourself an enhanced gun lane drive so you're exposed less often with this tank because it doesn't have armor that it can rely on, but it's got a turret so it can take advantage of corners. Um, now, on to the next and final TD, the worst TD. This is the WZ-132 GFT. Uh, this tank, it can't snipe, and it can't be in frontline like the 268. 
but it's slower in the 268, and it's a tiny bit better armor, but not enough to matter because this tank is armor is almost flat. It's at hardly an angle, but give yourself a ventilation, a gun rammer, and a camouflage net because this tank, like I said, it can't snipe. You're not going to be sniping with it hardly that often. If you ever use it, it's because your version 4 or your E3 is locked, so you have to take this. It's your only option. All right, now moving on to the artillery. Now, for some reason, they say you can put a large caliber gun rammer on this tank in tanks GG, but you cannot. So, <laughs> give, make your sure you're hidden. Second, and, oh no, I'm sorry, don't put a gun rammer on there. Second, uh, definitely, definitely put on a medium spall, or, uh, uh, spall liner on it, so that way if someone splashes you, they're doing less damage to you if you get counter already. And then finally, you definitely want that gun lane drive to improve that accuracy. Uh, there's really no point in going for this artillery due to the fact that it had, does such low Damage is a low caliber gun that it's you're most like if you shoot certain tanks, you're probably going to get unlucky. Uh, it's really good at stunning enemies at a group in a short period of time, but then you got that long, long reload. It can relocate very easy and it's got a turret, so it's kind of nice, but it it's just meh. Uh, this tank, you definitely want to stay hidden. All artillery always carry a camo net. Um, now next to the Con uh, Conqueror GC. Now this tank is nice because it is in closed hull. Uh, it's closed hulled, which means it's not open hulled. So in open hulled tanks, you cannot load ventilation, such as the Grill. Grill's an open hulled, so it doesn't have the ability to have ventilation because it already is vented. It's out into the air. But because this tank is closed hulled, you can mount yourself a ventilation to improve everything about it. Next, obviously mount yourself a gun, ra a gun rammer. Now it's your choice if you want to give yourself a gun lane drive. I recommend doing this setup with a gun lane drive so that way you can improve that aim time. But if you want, you can either swap out the gun lane drive or vents for a camo net to stay hidden. But this tank has got a little bit of speed to be able to relocate. And I think that if you're going to be uh, using this anyways, you're going to be using it at the time that there's a lot of hills. So you're going to be hiding behind those hills. And it's very important that you get off that because this thing has got a really, really atrocious aim time. So the gun lane drive is really important. And then the ventilation, because it's an option to help improve that one, your reload speed, and two, that aim time. Uh, it, it, I find out that this setup in the Conqueror GC is by far better. Now moving on to the GWE 100. Unlike the Conk GC, this thing is opened. So camo net, gun rammer, and then give yourself a enhanced gun lane drive to improve that accuracy. This here is pretty much going to be your standard set on the GW. Uh, there's really uh, it, because it has the gun rammer option. You obviously want to better that DPM, and then finally you want to stay hidden because this tank is ginormous. You want to stay hidden, so give yourself a gun rammer. And then moving on to the Object 261. This is a really, really fast relocation tank. Gun rammer is important. Gun lane drive is important. And then finally, give yourself a camo net so you can stay hidden. Uh, you have the option if you want to put on a super heavy spall liner, because like I said, this tank, but this tank relocates very, very quickly. Uh, just still, I recommend the camo net, highly, highly recommend the camo net, because this tank just moves. It's No one's ever going to hardly ever counter you, because you, you're so fast with it. Uh, now for our final tank, and finally done with this list, is the T92. This tank is slow. This tank is just, it's atrocious. Uh, I, it's really good. Uh, don't underestimate the T92. It is still really good. It's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it, it's really, like, it's splash is amazing. Uh, its aim time is horrible, so you definitely want to have that gun lane drive. You definitely want to increase that horrible, horrible reload with the gun rammer. And then finally, because this tank is big and it rarely moves due to the fact of its sheer load speed or slow speed you want to mount yourself a camo net guys i lied and said the t92 was the last one i completely forgot about the only tier 9 tank that is really really competitive in uh <laughs> and that's the m5355 it's competitive in clan wars this tank the reason this tank is competitive is the fact that it's got incredible relocation speed it's got some splash it's got a turret to be able to set you know you don't have to worry about doing some monster aim and it's got decent uh, re rate of fire. It's not as good damaging as the 261, but it's got better splash to a certain extent. Uh, this tank, like I said, it's it's not as good as some of the others, but because it is such so mediocre and great at everything, it's got to be able to re uh, move. It is a really good choice. Uh, this is my favorite artillery, and it's to me, it's better, than, in my opinion, better than all the other tier tens. Some other people will definitely argue. Uh, I, I and I agree with their points, but because this tank is basically an all-arounder 
I like it better to my personal gameplay. Uh, definitely give yourself ventilation because this is closed chassis and it can mount ventilation. Finally, give yourself a gun lane drive and then to finish it off, give yourself a camo net so you can stay hidden. Um, <laughs> like I said, guys, the M53 gets, it, it, sometimes I feel like it gets underestimated, but yet it gets overestimated because it's not great, but it's not bad. It's definitely better than some of the tier 10s in certain ways due to its relocation speed. I'm going to make that very clear. Its relocation speed is the biggest reason of why with it also having a decent sized gun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as, I, as I had stated in the beginning, you're going to find out that there was a lot of repeats of stuff and a lot of people I think seem to underestimate the use of coded optics, especially being the fact that you're going to be in a, a lot of the games are in open fields. Uh, coded optics can be extremely important even on a few heavy tanks that are out in the open. Um, usually your tanks such as your 277 or 5A, they, they've got other people spotting for them and they push as a group. So you really don't need to be able to see the enemy first. But a Kronwagen or a Super Conquer kind of on their own. So, so they're one of the few heavy tanks, uh, even the 50B, uh, they're one of the few heavy tanks that coded optics is pretty important for them and be able to like hold that flank. Uh, like I said, they're distant snipers. So being able to see the enemy is extremely helpful for them. Uh, like I said, I think a lot of people underestimate it. I um, hope you guys really enjoyed this video and you found all this information uh, useful. And for those of you who stuck around throughout the entire video, throughout that whole boringness, uh, I, I, congratulations, you got nothing but a clap from me. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys, like I said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this, and I hope to see you all on the battlefield.